Hello everyone, welcome back to the Film Insight channel. In today's video, we're going to discuss some dishes that Gordon Ramsay actually enjoyed. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get straight into the content, guys. We're starting things off with the mixing bowl. When people come in here, everybody knows me. The customers know me and all you guys know that. People know me the best because I make it a point of making friends with the customers and that's what customers want. They want to feel special. Situated in Belmore, New York, the mixing bowl owned by Billy and Lisa Galetti was in grave danger of closing down due to the growing competition in the area. When you look at the way the restaurant is put together, you can identify instantly from the paper cloths to the drapes to the plants to the ceiling to the color that this restaurant really is on its last legs. Billy was not only the chef, but did a lot of work around the restaurant while Lisa was only a waitress. When Jeff Ramsey entered the restaurant, this is what he found. Well, this is quiet. This is typical. All these staff, one, two, three, four. How many is booked for lunch? Nobody. No. no? Eventually, he ordered this. Winning Maryland crab cakes. They are excellent. An award winning. What award did they win? I'll have a, a zucchini pancake. Okay. And I'll go for the seared North Atlantic salmon. So, after a while, the manager returned with the award winning crab cake, which looked anything but appetizing. It looked like a ball surrounded by orange goop. Well, the presentation definitely didn't impress Chef Ramsay, but his opinion changed after he took a bite. He said, Award winning, maybe not. In terms of freshness, yeah. I wouldn't expect to find something so fresh in such a dreary, dreadful dining room. It looks like Chef Ramsay was taken aback because he didn't expect to actually like the crab cakes. So with one dish down, did he actually like the other dishes as well? Well, let's find out. Some of very bland, and the sauce just heavy, soggy, and vinegary. No one wants to come out to lunch and stink of garlic, that's for sure. After the episode aired, things seemed to be going well for the business. Jeff Ramsey revisited the place in the first ever revisited episode and saw that the restaurant was continuing to do well. So clearly, the crab cakes outshined the rest of the dishes. However, the good times didn't seem to last very long since the mixing bowl closed down in January of 2009. Did you guys actually know that the restaurant was closed before filming the episode in March of 2007? The only reason it was reopened was actually because of the show. Crazy, right? So basically, the restaurant was already dead when Chef Ramsay got there. It's actually pretty impressive that it managed to stay open for almost two years after Chef Ramsay left. Alright, so we're moving on to the next entry being Handlebar. I'd just like to say that that's uh, nicely seasoned, um, very tasty and nice. Melissa does a nice job. Situated in Mount Sinai, New York, Handlebar was featured in the second season of the show. The place was owned by a couple named Carolyn and Billy Leroy. When Gordon Ramsay finally arrived at the restaurant after getting lost at a fork road, he was asked to be seated immediately. While the swift service was definitely great, things quickly went downhill. Chef Ramsay was certainly left feeling confused by the sheer amount of menus that the place had to offer. But wait till you see how the chef was cooking up his steak. Finally, when it was time to order, this is what he ordered. I'll go for the soup of the day. Soup of the day? I'll go for the seafood uh, crepe as well. And then I'm going to finish with the filet mignon fondue. Filet mignon? Please. Thank you, man. Another thing Chef Ramsay noticed about the place was... The dining room's empty. Look at the place. The decor's ghastly. It's so 80s. Even the fish tank's been here longer than me. When the food finally arrived to his table, the first thing he had was the clam chowder. You won't believe what he said about it. I'd just like to say that that's uh, nicely seasoned, um, very tasty and nice. Melissa does a nice job. The next dish was the seafood crepe, which contained some crab, lobster and shrimp. Here was Chef Ramsay's reaction to the food. How is everything? Robbery. Um, the scallops are firm, the prawns are way overcooked, and the crab meat, it's plastic. So it had been 20 minutes since his last order, and he was still waiting on his beef fondue. We all know that to keep Chef Ramsay waiting is a terrible idea. Finally, when the beef fondue arrived, this was Ramsay's reaction. It comes out looking like dog food. That was rancid, pointless, tasteless, a complete utter joke. So overall, he had a terrible experience, but the dish that shined through was the clam chowder. Fast forward a little bit, things took a turn for the worse when Billy succumbed to his cancer in 2015. Unfortunately, the restaurant closed down in early 2022. It had reopened a couple of times with different names like Skybox Restaurant and Sports Bar and Benchwarmer's Tavern and Grill. But nothing seemed to work and finally the shutters were pulled down for good. Moving on to season 3 of Kitchen Nightmares, we have Bazzini. Honestly, I mean it's just greasy, bland and you cut into the fish and it's just mush. In episode 3, Chef Ramsay visited Bazzini located in Richmond, New Jersey. When Chef Ramsay walked in, he found out that they didn't serve during lunch hours. 
What kind of restaurant is that? Well, they're already off to a bad start in the famous chef's book, that's for sure. Anyway, when they finally did open, a starving chef Ramsay rushed right in. As soon as he stepped into the restaurant, this was his reaction. This is minute, isn't it? It's challenging. <laughs> My goodness me. Is this it? Yes, sir. Wow. It's like being inside a doll's house. It, it, it has some decor challenges here. But the famous chef decided to throw a curveball at the owner, Paul Bazzini. And so the kitchen got busy preparing their signature dishes for Chef Ramsay. When Chef Ramsay tasted the fettuccine, this is how he reacted. Cold. Bland. Really bland. Okay. Next, he tried the chicken milanese and said, That's not normal for a chicken to be so f***ing hard. On to the next dish being the mushroom risotto. Well, let's see if it tastes better than it looks. Zini's risotto. Ooh, wow, well, that's extraordinary, no? What a mess. And absolutely disgusting. The next dish was an almond-crusted tilapia with a side of jasmine rice. After trying it out, Ramsay had this to say. It's just so bland, honestly. I mean, it's just greasy, bland, and you cut into the fish and it's just mush. Nothing good so far, right? Well, things got finally better towards the end. Chef Ramsay ordered a slice of New York cheesecake and a slice of carrot cake. And this was his reaction to the cake. Have a look. <laughs> First of all, that is delicious. Awesome. Uh, whose recipe is that? Mine. Can I have it? No, for a price, everything for a price. For a price. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> After Gordon Ramsay visited Bazzini, the restaurant did stay open for a while, but it never seemed to get any traction as there were only a few reviews on their Yelp page. To make matters even worse, Sharon the pastry chef, who is probably the only good thing about this restaurant, left to start her own baked goods business. As an inevitable result, it closed down after the Kitchen Nightmares episode aired. Alrighty, on to season 4 with Zeke's. Mm. I mean, that is nasty. What I'm struggling for here is the lack of freshness. They feel taste slightly mushy, which is a big disappointment. Chef Ramsay visited Zeke's restaurant in New Orleans to save it from closure. While he was waiting for the staff to take his order, this is what he had to say about the place. Wow, that back wall is hideous. What a mess. Ramsay didn't have the greatest experience with his main course dishes. He hated the frozen shrimp and found the oysters and fried chicken to be tasteless. Next up, he had the dessert, and like Bazzini, it shone brighter than everything else. Check out what Gordon Ramsay had to say. But it tastes delicious. Who made that? Email it makes it. Mm -mm -mm. But a dessert is just not enough to revive an entire restaurant. For this very reason, Zeke's was sold and closed in October of 2012. At the same address, the new owners who purchased the restaurant started a new one named Porter and Luke's. They hired an experienced chef named Vincent Manguano. Porter and Luke's is open for lunch and dinner and has a moderately sized menu featuring fish, chicken, and seafood. So for those who come looking for Zeke's restaurant, they can actually check out Port and Luke's instead. Nowadays though, the place has pretty mediocre reviews with a 3.5 star review on Yelp. As our final entry, we're going to be covering a restaurant called Blackberries. Hey, general manager, come here you. Get that beard over here. You didn't tell me that you're dating the owner. Featured in the fifth season of the show, Blackberries, located in New Jersey, was in desperate need of Ramsay's help. Chef Ramsay walked into the place and this is what followed. Somebody having a party? No party, we're no. just having um, lunch. Okay, great. So, what did he order? Well, take a look. For uh, collard greens, yes. okay, great. that smothered pork chop sounds delicious. The mac and cheese as well, please. Okay. The chitlins. Desserts. How's the bread velvet cake? Delicious. Okay, great. The first dish was a pork chop, but let's see if Chef Ramsay enjoyed it or not. Just like someone shot on my plate. It's just dry. That's bland. Nothing seasoned there. The next dish was collard greens, which looked like grass thrown together on a plate. But did Chef Ramsay like it? It's bland, no seasoning, it's just fried and soggy and limp. As you've already seen, Ramsay didn't like the food at Blackberries. He was actually worried that the chitlins would poison him. However, it looks like these restaurants saved their best dish for last. In comes the dessert to the rescue, and boy did it not disappoint. Chef Ramsay was a big fan of what he had received. To be more specific, it was a delicious red velvet cake. Later on down the line, Blackberries unfortunately closed its doors for good. In response to this, the owner Shelly Winters posted this as a message. I want to say that we just no longer saw room for growth. We were so stagnant. We were barely maintaining but unable to generate the clientele we wanted. Withers explained, I think we gave it a good 10 years. We had a wonderful time and are looking onto bigger and better things. 
In another message, the BlackBerry staff said that the restaurant could not contend with an economic downturn and struggled because of a lack of parking. Today, the old BlackBerry restaurant location is the Un Nuevo Renacer Bakery. Reviews seem to be average, but the place is pretty successful. With that, we've sadly come to the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it! Do you know any other dishes that Chef Ramsay enjoyed? Let us know in the comments down below. Don't forget to give us a like and share. Also hit the subscribe button to never miss out on our updates. Thanks for watching guys!